stumbled onto like a twisted sister and you know the more hair stuff. heavy hairy heavier metal so to speak judas priest iron maidens and then uh can i freeze you one second ask you did you have hair like hair metal hair i had long hair yeah but you didn't have did you have it all teased up did you go all out like poison and all that uh maybe on occasion yeah all right you know? cool cool <laughs> maybe maybe on occasion you know uh, you know anyone who has pictures of that that's got to be the, that's pure gold <laughs> Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Average Superstar TV. I'm your host, Lauren Lepre. Sound effect, boom. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And this week, we are back in the music world. This week, we got an amazing guest, someone I know. It's kind of weird to say this. Close to 30 years now, <laughs> we're back in the music scene, back in my roots of the Pennsylvania hardcore scene. Uh, this guy... <laughs> This guy I could go on forever about. He's a legend in the New Jersey hardcore scene, mostly for his ultimate, to me, the best band that ever came out of New Jersey in the hardcore scene, Fury of Five. I got a lot to unpack with this guy. He promises he's not a boring guest with that. Welcome, Stickman James from Fury of Five. What's up, my man? Hey, man. Good to see you again. Yes, likewise, man. I haven't seen you in a while since... Uh... Maybe the documentary. Maybe I see. Oh yeah. No, that. no, dude, that was 2013. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> definitely seen. <it. laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. have been weird. It's kind of weird saying that because I released that in 2014, but I know the interviews were mostly in 13. So it's weird saying I'm going on 10 years. That movie's that old. It's just like seems like yesterday, but crazy, yeah. crazy. Right. But it, it yeah, brother. Weird. Um, I definitely want to go through a little bit of origin story and then to what's going on in our world today, but. As far as back as you go, what was your origin? What brought you to the hardcore scene in general? How'd you find out about it? Uh, I, I would have to say by chance, really. You know, I was a metalhead, you know, in the, I don't want to say glam, but, you know, like in that, you know, early 80s, you know, like 83, 84, you know, I was into like the hard rock the Doors, Rush, you know, Led Zeppelin type vibe, and then kind of stumbled onto like a Twisted Sister, and you know the more hair stuff, heavy, hairy, heavier metal, so to speak. Judas Priest, Iron Maidens, and then uh, can I freeze you one second? And ask you, did you have hair like hair metal hair? I had long hair. Yeah, but you didn't have. Did you have it all teased up? Did you go all out like poison and all that? Um, uh, maybe on occasion. Yeah, all right. You know? Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe on occasion, you know, uh, you know. Anyone who has pictures of that, that's got to be, the, that's pure gold. <laughs> <laughs> I was mar married at a very young age to a glam type chick. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So she was the hair tease type glam girl. So sometimes, you know, back in the day, a band I used to chill with, uh, Lethal Aggression, used to call those type of people spooges. So I used to spooge my hair, you know what I mean? It is what it is. It seems man. like too much work when you look at it. It's just, uh, how, I, how, how do you do it? I had the mullet, I had it all, you know what I mean? That's what uh -huh. it was in the 80s, you know? Like, yeah. so, you know, and then, you know, I, I was in a record store in Madawan and, and I stumbled on to like the Plasmatics and a couple other records, like Agnostic Front. And uh, I think it was maybe like Ludacris and... Uh, and then I just, you know, started seeking that out because I got away, away from the, I got deeper into like death metal vibe and then crossed over into that. And then I was liking the lyrical aspect of hardcore, you know, and even to this day, I can tell you that I'm not a super hardcore fan of the bands because I don't think people are really authentic with their emotion and feelings like I am when it comes to putting it into my music you know what i mean like that, i don't do that, that's it. I, definitely I, that's definitely why your 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 band made such an impact which we'll get into more later but i totally agree with you today for me when you say a hardcore scene that brother sisterhood 
is lifetime and means so much to my heart. But I do have a problem with a lot of those bands on stage. As you said, I don't believe them. No, exactly. I, I just, and it's funny you even say that because I went to a show a couple of weeks ago in Jersey in Belmar and there was supposed to be all these like short core bands, you know, like that I never even heard of. And I've been a part of the short core scene <laughs> my whole life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like there's a whole like, new culture of New Jersey hardcore bands that are like kind of separate from the state of New Jersey, in my opinion, because if you're repping New Jersey to the extent that I rep New Jersey to, I put it in the forefront and I let people know we are New Jersey hardcore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it's in their songs. You, it's you carried the flag. Yes. You know what I mean? So like, how, how do you deem yourself New Jersey hardcore? And, and I didn't even know you were a New Jersey band. You know, but I went to the show anyway, and uh, I don't know what the band was. Uh, and I could just tell from his persona on the stage and his rhetoric that, like, ah, this dude don't mean what he says. And I got so freaking annoyed, I just left. I paid like 20 bucks or whatever it was to get in for me and the wife, and then I just left. I didn't even stay. I didn't even care. You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I only fuck with bands that are real you know what i mean and you mm -hmm. know who the real people are I, I only respect real emotion real feelings and attitude and the respect shown to me i will sh show you right back even if i don't even like your band per se but if you're that guy and you're repping it the way i feel it should be represented i'll support you 100 man you know what i mean I'll give you a shirt off my back but if you're one of those bands thinking you're somebody and not well fuck you you know what i mean <laughs> Dolly gets well, you. Hey, listen, and this is why we're back. We're here to show you how New Jersey hardcore is supposed to be represented. Yeah. Bottom line. You know what I mean? Like all these bands think they're this and that and they're talented. They're, they're all whack to me. You know what I mean? I only fuck with the real bands. Like my friends from Bayway, my 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 boys from Tear Gas. You know, there's a whole bunch of new bands that are about to emerge in New Jersey scene and uh we're, you know reaching out is one of one one in the forefront you know what i mean and it's all our friends kids you know so there's there's some things happening you know but you know i got to i got to i keep on putting my face out there i go to shows shows more now to let people know listen this is how you do it you know what i mean you just don't play the music and just hide in a back room or you go on the internet and trash bands and don't support the bands. You know, I push bands all day long. I'm on the internet. That's my thing now. You know what I mean? I'm on it on the social medias and I'm supporting, you know what I mean? The best I can to get people interested in the scene again, you know, but it's happening, man. A lot of people hit me up, old heads, new heads being, you know, like, wow, it's great. You're back. The vibe is good. You know, and like, and I, I feel it, you know, it's cool. You know. Cool. So we'll definitely get more into the fury, but, but going back to the beginning, when you said like when you first got it into the scene, were you kind of like an overnighter? Like I was when I first walked into a, a show in 93 in Wilkes-Barre, PA, where I remember accidentally is how I just kind of came into hardcore going to a show. I walked out and I went home and I started, literally tearing the Def Leppard posters off the wall and stuff. Like it literally, it literally I, I, was one of those. I, I, I didn't do that, but I was definitely sprung. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, this is, this is cool. I was into the fear of it, the yes. violence of it, the negativity releasing from it. You know what I mean? Cause that's what it was. You would go there to release yeah. your anger and your frustrations and and I was so drawn to it I, until the and, and still to this day I'm still drawn to violence. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I just love it. You know what I mean? Like in its expression, I love seeing a motherfucker get knocked out. I love that shit. I love yeah. seeing a dude get stomped if he deserves it. You know what I mean? Like I'm into that 100, percent man. You know, I'm not about no peace. No why? Because I don't have peace. You know what I mean? I don't have peace of mind. You know what I mean? I'm a very very angry dude contained now you know what i mean more more mature with it you know like our next record might be called intellectual violence and uh i think it's very clever you know what i mean like so no. you know what i mean 
I totally get you with that. And this music was really made from the streets. It was a bunch yes. of people that just, you know, they didn't fit anywhere regardless of what race they were or whatever. When you kind of came to hardcore or the punk scene, it's like, to me, you were a minority within a minority. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you, you, didn't, you didn't click in the real world. For some odd reason, when we all get together hundreds, that thousands into that show, you're just like, you're just one giant family. Right. Well, at first, you know, when you, when you first get into the scene, you see the unity. You know what yeah. I mean? You see you see it. You see the brotherhood, the sisterhood. And then when you're in it, it's almost like a government. Then you start seeing the sectors and then it starts division within the scene. Then you got your straight edge. You got your skinheads. You got your punk rockers. You know what I mean? And then you and it just goes around. And then there's internal fucking drama. And it's always going to be like that. That's why I wrote the song "Every Man for Himself." Yeah, but that's, well, that's what the so the song's about. Hardcore, you know what I mean? That's the way I see it. I see all these bands preaching, but I don't see what they're preaching happening. You know what I mean? To me, it's even now. Fury of Five is its own entity. We still, I still feel uh, shunned. You know what I'm saying? Like by people I know. You know what I mean? Like, you know, big bands that came up with us at the same time. You know what I mean? Giving us no, mm, you know what I mean? Well, you know what? Fuck you. You never helped me back then. You're not going to help me now. I can get there now on my own. I have the platform to do it. I got the money to do it. You can't stop me. You know what I mean? Back in the, the early days, you can, it was easy to cancel because there was no way to get out there. You know what I mean? They can catch you off this, the internet, but you can't cancel me totally. If yeah. you got the money to push yourself, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, it is what it is, man. The scene is the scene, and I don't really involve myself in that. You know what I mean? I just involve myself with what I do, and then I surround myself with the right people and the right bands, and and, and that's how we grew it in the 90s, and that's how we're going to grow it again. You know what I mean? I can already see it happening, you know? Got gotcha. you. Because we're, 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 Fury 5 is leaders. We're, we're uh, we're our own band. We got our own sound. Nobody does it the way we do it. You know, nobody sings like me. Nobody writes like I do. Nobody puts their heart and attitude into it like I do, in, in my opinion. You know what I mean? There, there's some bands, definitely on the West Coast. I went out there and met some super, super dope, dope bands, you know. And uh, the vibe in the Cali is what it was like here in the 90s, which was great, man. Yeah, that's was awesome. Yeah, great era. Great era for yeah. sure. But you guys even you, you guys took it way. You had a different presence, even when you pulled up. Like I just liked how you, a lot of times you, you kind of had matching outfits. You know the art, the camo, the white t, the, the white tank tops. Like yeah, you, know, you changed it up a lot. But it was like you were a unit. It was different. You guys had a different presence well, when you showed up. You, well, you, you got to separate yourself from the rest. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be grouped in with a, a whole bunch of idiots because we're not idiots you know what i mean like i never want to be a part of something that's not doing nothing you know what i mean like you know i always i'm a thinker you know i'm a visionary dude i always trying to go forward you know even in my life itself from where i was and where i am today you know what i mean i always introspect learn and keep it moving you know what i'm saying and, and just even like i having a conversation with my buddy from work the other day i said yo i know this I know that I'm here for more. I'm here for a reason. I haven't figured it out yet. Maybe I'm not ready for the blessing or whatever may be coming to me, but I know that I'm going to get to another levels and, and just keep on until I die. You know what I mean? And as long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep on grinding. You know what I mean? Some people just give up, get self-complacent and just, just want to die at home and, live the, a boring ass life and make reasons why they can't do stuff. I will never do that. I'm 55 years old. And just two weeks ago, I was in the pit. Like I, it was like nineties all over again, spinning and crowd killing. I think, I saw, I think I saw a clip of it actually. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, so like it's in me, they will never leave me. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to die on my feet. Guaranteed. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, you're blue collar. You're you're yeah. It's it's a whole different world 
you know, I do, I do the same thing. I've been, I've never been unemployed since I've, I've been 13 years old, but like you go into today, like America's gotten a lot more softer. I think the hardcore scene's gotten a lot more softer. You know, there, there, there was, if you really kind of look at, I'm not throwing punches at everybody who I like in the scene that that's new in the last so many years, but I don't think a lot of them would have survived the nineties. Yeah. I just don't think they would have stayed around long because you know, if you ran your mouth, you were dealt with. Well, yeah. Well, we, well, well you got to understand progression and, and the way life moves. So, like, things change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, I sit around sometimes and think about what my grandfather thought when, when he died at 94 and the things that he's seen and where he came from. I mean, he fought in World War II. You know what I mean? Some of these kids now wouldn't even fight for anything. You know what I mean? They wouldn't even they stand fight. up for their old mother if somebody spit on her. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It just, uh, you know, but that's all, that's all learned. You know what I mean? Like that's how they were raised. You know, they were raised with no backbone. So how can you have a backbone? You know what I mean? Everything's a learned behavior. I don't care what you say. You know what I mean? Like that's why you go to school. That's why you go to college. Every day you're learning. So if you're not taught the right way, you're going to be this way. You know, and I'm not saying you have to go out there and punch people in the face, but you should be able to stand up for yourself. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, handle your business without repercussion if it's uh, justified. You know, yes. And this music was uh, it was our flag. It was our rally. And it, and and a lot of people said, well, okay, it was this anti government No, it really wasn't. It was a lot of brother sisterhood. Where you know, lot, everybody every, everybody had a different story of why they were there. Everybody should be anti government. The government is not your friend. You know yeah, what I mean? No, the no, government no. is not designed to help you. It's there to. That's why we have issues. That's yeah. why there's uh, there's no equality. You know what I mean? There's there's a, that's. They're the reason why there is homeless people. You know what I mean? Because they're always taking and taking and never giving back, you know? And and, and if you have a, uh, a structure like that, there will never be equality because they're designed to keep it like that. You know what I mean? They they want the finger pointing at everybody keep, else keep except for them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, you know, like even like I work hard. I make a lot of money. Half of my check goes to the government. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Then I got to pay property tax on property at your own. Like, even if I, even if my house was paid off, I still have to pay property taxes. For what? Yeah. I own it now. You it's know what I mean? They just, they just keep on taking and taking. So, any, and listen, you can use fucking COVID as an example of who I want. I, I don't even fuck with anybody anymore because of COVID and people wanting to see people lose jobs for not being vaccinated and yeah. scream and put a mask on. You know what I mean? Your body is designed to heal itself. You dumb it fuck. You know what I'm saying? These people that are telling you what to do are human, just like you. They're no better than you. They got the same brain as you. You know what I mean? They, they just appear smarter than you. But if you do your homework and know history, mm-hmm. humanity had survived Worse with less way less technology, worse. less hospitals, less science, less doctors. You know what I mean? And you're going to tell me to put a mask on. And I work instruction. I just did a safety class for confined space. For me to go into a confined space, if it's, uh, you know, could be deadly to me, I have to have a respirator fitted to my face. There ain't nothing that blue diaper was going to do to stop no. anything no. or some plexiglass in front of a cash register. Yeah. You know what I mean? People are dumb. Yeah. Just dumb, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're dumb. It, it, and they, listen, they, I got vaccinated. And that's the biggest regret of my fucking life because my job was threatened. You know what I mean? And at times, man, I wish I never did it. You know what I mean? I felt like a fucking sheep. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm in a different place in my life. Married, you know what I mean? I got a yeah. nice home, you know what I mean? I, I I live a different lifestyle. Your livelihood was threatened. Yes. That that's yes. you know it, that it, I it, might not work because I was not vaccinated because yeah. we work for a lot of pharmaceutical companies. Yes. You know what I mean? So like to get on these properties, you had to have a vaccination card. But I mean, that what that shot was, and I like the the 
the lie, what it's called. They call it a vaccination shot. You can still catch it. So that's yeah. that's a immediate lie right there off the hand. But Yo, people like you, people I'm like you and me, we work out a lot. We do we put the rest of our ability. I'm sure we do our slop at the same time, but we 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 put the right foods in our body. We try to live a healthy lifestyle. That is the best way to fight anything. Yes. And a shot is just look, I, I'll put my I'll put Yo, that my, was the first shot I ever got in my life, probably since a kid. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And ever since I got the COVID shot, I get sick all the time now. I'm sick right now. I've been sick since Friday. My nose won't. And ever since I got the shot, my nose, my, my nose don't stop running. I get heavy fatigued all the time. And I'm yep. like, this is fucking crazy, bro. Is this thing going to eventually they kill me? Yeah. They is don't this want shot going to kill that? me? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people's hearts are stopping and yep. they're trying to cover that shit up. You know what I mean? And I'm not like, doing conspiracy in the I'm yeah, not a conspiracy money. theory or, or type dude, but uh, you know what I mean? Like they, they hush on a lot of things. And listen, at the end of the day, the government's not your friend. And back to the hardcore thing, that's what it was. You know, it was always anti that, you know what I mean? It's, unless you got the facts, but even now fact checking is fake. You know what I mean? They make lies, facts, you know, mm-hmm. like you don't, you don't even know what the truth is anymore. It's, it's crazy. You know, is I just have little- my truth. Yeah, That's it's your it. truth too, but I, I, I get, but isn't it kind of weird how <coughs> seems like majority of the hardcore scene has picked a side? And but I that's found the way that, they, but, but that's the way they grew up. You know what yeah. I mean? They grew up in in uh, that very privileged and in, in, in a very liberal upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, me myself, I'm conservative by nature. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I'm an independent conservative when it comes to politics, but I don't really fuck with politics. Like, I didn't vote in the last two elections because I'm not voting for a lesser evil. Both the, both parties is stupid. It shouldn't even be a two-party system. You should have more choices than two, right. and, then you have to, and you shouldn't have to vote for some old fucking dude. How about some fresh young faces yeah. with some new ideas with the times? You know what I mean? You think your old dude would have wisdom and knowledge and, and to, to a level that would change the country and the direction and, and things like that, but but it doesn't. You know what I, I mean? Oh, the old mentality doesn't work anymore. Joe Biden or Trump. We need fresh young minds. You know mm-hmm. what I mean to to, yeah. to 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 freshen up the world. You know, like but you know, I, it's I, never I, gonna I, happen because you can't look behind the scenes of the puppets that are set before you. You know right. what I mean? Like, so, you know, you got the corporations running the whole country. You know, you got your uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, the Walmarts. And, you know what I mean? The whole, it's all ran by corporations, you know? The, yeah. the money is controlling all these politicians, you know? The big lie, you know? Yeah. And when you're voting, you're you're really, when you step back, you're voting for one of two strangers in a suit. That's really That's all that is. And I, I always get so like i stare at people when they snap over politics i'm like you you never met either one of these guys like yeah, they, they have like, no there's no emotion attached no to, to to you from them you know what i mean if you would die tomorrow they don't care they don't know who you are yeah they ain't you know coming to you they're not exactly you know yeah. what i mean so why why you like care what they think you know yeah and the pedal back when you're saying like the older people i totally agree i think I actually think it should be a 15 year window. Like I think someone between like age 40, you know, 44 and 59, that should be the age you should be president. Cause I think if you're too old, you've forgotten about the youth. If you're, 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 you're you can't be too young cause you're not experienced. So I think if you're in that age bracket, it's like, I got to look down the road here. I'm getting older. I better start really definitely paying attention to that, but I'm not that old. I was just over here on the younger side. So I think you're kind of a, a good balance there. But I, that and, never and, and not only that, what what is what what is what is their 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 spiel all the time? Change, change, change. But here they are, year after year after year, and in, in the same position. They never give up the position. They ain't about change. You know what I mean? Like there, there should be shorter terms, so different faces can get in there, and you get different looks. You know what I mean? What yeah. what happens when a football game's going on, and the and the team starts to lose? What do they do? They change the quarterback. quarterback. They change the receiver. They change the running back. The government never changes. It's a revolving door. You know what I mean? They just put them in different 
positions yeah inside there and just make it worse you know what i mean yeah. And, and then just, taking it, tons of money and giving it to other countries it's where, all where, about where, money. where whole, it's needed here, you know, it's all designed about, it's all designed to make money for themselves. It's not about giving it to the people. If that was the case, there wouldn't be homeless people sleeping in tents all over California. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's crazy, you know, just not only California, but, but uh, there's a lot of homelessness in California because I was just out there and I seen it. Seattle yeah. really bad. Like there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're, they're everywhere. I mean, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. But like when you they, they take money and they give to the Ukraine, I'm like, look, I ain't got nothing against anybody in Ukraine. I don't know people in the Ukraine, but we need that money here. Yeah, well, you can't listen. At the end of the day, you can't care about everybody on the yep. planet. And you know what I mean? Like, it's not you know, even, even, even when people used to say to me during COVID, like, oh, what about the people in the nursing home? I don't know them. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm not going to the funeral. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I only care about me and who's around me and the people that care about me. You know what I mean? Like, that's it. You know what I mean? It's a selfish world and people don't and people pretend that it's not. And that's that, that, and that's sad. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, this guy's talking that, but he don't really mean that. You know what I'm saying? Because if it was thrown into his his court, he'd be like, "Oh, you know, we start bugging out about some bullshit." There, there, there's only so much a person like you and myself that could even have a lot of comments on this or be trying to like slam your your you know your your knowledge into someone else with a debate. Because you and I do something that's true American every day. We get up and we go to work. And I'm just finding more and more one of the scariest things to me in the country right now is just no one has good work that ethic. It just yeah. seems like if they're under like 32, it's just like it's a it, they're like almost patriotic about like living home with their parents still. And it's like, what's the government's fault? <laughs> I can't get a job. I'm like, yeah. so do you, I mean, do you get up and go knock door to door or do you just send an email that's going to go to their spam folder? Are you trying to get a job like physically trying to get a job? And no, 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 they don't. They don't want to work, man. You know, I've been on my own pretty much since I was 12 years old, running the streets, very unsupervised youth. You know, in and out of juvenile jail, went to prison. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I learned everything the hard way. But hey, listen, that's what life is, right? You're supposed to live and learn. And the problem with the youth is they're not learning anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not. They're being taught all kinds of craziness in my opinion, but you know, that's neither here or there. That's none of my business. You know, it, you know, the whole world is like taking a very, very crazy turn in my opinion, but how much longer am I going to be on the planet? You know what I mean? Like, do I care that much? No, not really. That's why I don't say none because it doesn't affect me. As long as it don't affect my life, I don't give a fuck, you know, but I can see what's coming and I'm preparing for it. You know what I mean? I could tell because that's how my job and uh, the construction business is slowing down. When the banks are not funneling money out for projects and stuff means that something, something's happening. Yes. You know what I mean? But people don't pay attention to those signs. They just go about it like la, 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 la. But when you're doing construction and building is a part of the culture in, in, in this country is, it's a big dynamic, you know what I mean? A big, uh, funneling system for money and when it comes to almost a complete whole i haven't had a 40 hour check going on six weeks now because we're so slow we got people laid off and uh it's scary i'm not gonna even gonna front you know what i mean to to to, to be 55 I, I say this all the time i'm gonna be i'm 55 years old i do not feel my age I do not act my age i don't move like a normal 55 year old dude but how do i find another job you know what I mean? Like when you fill out an application and they see 1968. Oh, this is an old motherfucker. You know what Without I mean? Without bringing you in to even look at you. They're, they're right. Like, they're, yeah. You know, going off paper. Yep. So even at this age, it's hard to find a job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's scary, man. It's scary, man. The government it, is fucking up a lot of shit. People don't even realize that. And they keep on looking for them like... They're God or something, you know, like for the answers, it use your common sense, yeah. do some research, do some homework, just Google it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can get you can get mad truths just from Google, right? That's what they say. 
I don't yeah, know. <laughs> but at the same time, like, on the opposite of what you just said, this might make you feel good. I know about three dudes around your age that went and tried to get, you know, good jobs and that they got them. All three of them got them. And these, these should have been jobs that someone in their like mid twenties should have gotten like for the long run. And what happened was well, that's probably, probably a benefit because these young kids don't want to work. There you go. The problem yeah. was what you said, yeah, these 28, they, they, they call out every other day. They're undependable. So you got to pick someone from that generation. You know, that, right, right. that that understands, like, you got to show up for work. You got to be on time. You got to get the job done. And that's, that's uh, to me, that is my number one problem with Americans these days. Like, the, the next generation up is this: they don't want to work hard. And no, they want I don't want it for free. And, and, yeah, they want it for free. They want all their student loans paid off. When you say you want your student loan paid off, yes, I'm on the other side of the fence. You're asking for me and Stickman here, our tax money, to pay for it. Right. So we're going to go to work and you get a free education. Oh, hi, hi. You know, like, no, I just, I, do I think, Listen, do I think schools are look, way too expensive? Yeah. Everything's yeah. too expensive. You know, even going to the doctor, going to the dentist. Yes. Everything's expensive. But at the end of the day, all right, so the government's going to wipe clean all these, these, these debts for these college kids, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to pay for it one way or another, the government's not giving you anything for free. Yeah, it's they're not going to lose. It just appears like that. But at the, they're going to get it on the back end somehow, and somehow you will pay for it again, but even worse, you know? Yeah. If you put yourself in debt, you did it to yourself. That's your problem. Figure it out. I'm telling you right now, dude, in 2003, 2002 to 2003 was probably one of the worst times in my life like financially, I broke myself down, broke myself down mentally, took myself down a very dark road, almost to death. And, and I climbed back. It took me to 2017 to pay off all my debt to buy my first home. But I grinded. You understand? I grinded from 2003 to 2017. I'm talking $30,000 debt, $20,000 debt, $15,000 debt, fives and tens. A lot of debt, I'm telling you. You ask my wife. She was there the whole time helping me figure out how to pay this stuff off because I wanted to pay it off. I caused it. I wanted to pay for it. You know what I mean? And, and that's what's called being a true American right there, that story. I that, did that, it. You, you, and then, you, and yourself, you put yourself in a bad hole, a bad situation. You realize what your problem was. You knew you found, you figured a way out and you got out of it. And I'm sure as that $30,000 that you owed, that last payment had to have felt amazing. And then boom, where's the next one, right? Well, listen, you're not buying a house if you have bad credit. credit. You no. know what I mean? So I paid it all off, bought my house. And then I, another debt found me after the fact, <laughs> paid it off immediately. You know what I mean? And uh -huh. now on my second home, you know what I'm saying? A more expensive home in a better, better place, a better area than where we used to live. And, you know, my, my life is blessed, man. I just, you know, I make the adjustments. I figure it out and I keep it moving, man. Even with this band, Fury of Five, was I the cause of the downfall of the band? Absolutely. But I made amends. I made apologies. I made this. I took the steps to make it come back full circle. More mm -hmm. or less. You know what I mean? And now the band's the best it's ever been because I made the changes necessary as a person and people can see the changes. And that's the difference. And here we are. We just had practice last night, getting ready for our first record release show. Imagine that. Another record from Fury of Five. 23 years later. It's amazing, bro. And the response and, and, and uh, the feedback is just so humbling. You know what I mean? Because it's Fury 5. We give you Fury that we didn't change a fucking thing. Not the rhetoric, not the attitude. Yeah. Because I'm a real person. You know what I mean? I still have issues. I still have demons. I still have hate and anger inside me. It's in the DNA. It's the in my blood, you know? And we, we, we put out a dope-ass record, man, you know? But just like that, it took a long time and working through all my issues to, to get it to this point. But it comes back to work ethic. And I have that work ethic. I have that drive. I have that determination. You know what I mean? I'm built different, you know? But we're last of a dying breed. 
you know? You are. You, you know, it's just like, you know, the callous hands are going away. You know, nobody wants to build anymore. Nobody wants to put in that grind and get in the dirt, you know? You, listen, we build a lot of scaffolding shit tanks. These motherfucking kids would puke their brains out. They wouldn't even go in that. You know what I mean? Like, we build a scaffolding there for days sometimes, you know, in a shit tank. Kids won't do that now, you know. I ain't going in there. It's dirty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever, man. I do what I've got. I I'll do what I got to do. You know. Absolutely. So when the band the band ends, was it was it around two thousand one? Was it ish? Ninety eight. Ninety eight. All right. So the band ends, and I'm. I know you've always. You know, I'm sure yeah, it was always there. Like I'd love to get the band back together. So currently, I know it's. You, Chico, and Jay were from from the originals, and, and Mike, and Mike. So you got you actually have four or five originals. Yeah, it's all four originals, and and the new drummer, Mike, Mikey Mann. Sweet, sweet. So I mean, <coughs> for anyone who's never uh, heard of Fury of Five, that because I got people from all, film and all over the world here. I mean, could you explain what Fury was in the nineties? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were different. We yes, were we, were. we we ran on our own fuel. Um, we were very violent, very angry. Uh, we didn't we didn't take no for an answer. We didn't take no shit. You know, you you re looked at us funny, and we were kicking your ass. You know what I mean? You didn't pay us m our money at the end of the night from the club. We took something from you, a monitor. Or, you know what I mean? Like. We were just though we were so thugs, thugged out, right? Like we were just, you know, we'd beat bouncers up, you know, we'd beat bands up, you know, we were disrespected. It was a problem. Like it's just we were just a we were a problem, you know what I mean? But that stigma still lingers today. You know what I mean? People still, you know, hold on to that like 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 uh like it's the the holy grail, like these guys are they're assholes, you know. We're not, you know what I mean? We're different. I could say I'm different. You know what I mean? Could, could I still act like that? Absolutely. You know what I mean? But I'm, I have a lot to lose now if I do act like that. Yeah. So you would have to really step over every line. Yeah. Yeah. You would have to really like be in my circumference right here in front of my face, threatening me because you could talk all that on the internet. You could talk that six feet away from me, but you come anywhere near me. And it's a wrap for you. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are, bro. You know, what? that's why I say that I'm always one voice from ruining my life every day. You know, and this is true. This is not, this is not uh me just trying to act like a tough guy. Every day I'm contemplating somebody's death. I think about death all the time. I, I hate people. I really truly hate people, human people. Like I always say, like, I wish. And I'm not even bullshitting you, bro, that a fucking meteor would come and just take this whole planet out because that's what it needs. It needs to it needs a, a reboot. This whole this whole shit needs a reboot. We're so lost. It's it's insane, bro. When Common it sense is gone. The, the, the what they're trying to teach kids in school is insane. You know, like it's just uh, it's out of control. But listen. There's nothing I can do about it. So I don't speak about it. You know what I mean? Like I, but I'm not going to entertain your subject matter. You know what I mean? I don't have to believe what you believe. You know what I mean? But if you don't now, now you're phobic or you're, you're racist or you're this or you're that. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm not even going to pay attention to any of that. I'm not going to speak on this. I'm not going to speak on that. Just do your fucking thing. Ruin the world. As long as it, like I said before, as long as it doesn't affect what I do, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? To each your own, keep it moving. You know, listen, I, I was put here to live my best life. I don't give a fuck about your life unless we have a connection. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know. What was your initial thoughts when when uh, you, you guys first kind of rolled into, I think Fury's first show in the Scranton area was at Q's and Quarters. Is where, at least that's where I think I met you guys. You rolled yeah, up. Yeah, that was, that was in uh, the James like they had, Way. They had below. a pool table in there. Yeah, yeah. That's table. Q's and Quarters. That was below yeah. a James Way. It was just a little pool hall. That's like a yeah, Walmart. It was put on uh, 
John, dude, yeah, John, John yeah, John put on RSB, right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was you guys a, rolled up. I remember you had the IOU nothing shirts and everything. I was just like, yo, these guys are like ready to go here, but yo, know, Pennsylvania was like a second home to us, man. Like that was like, gonna be my question, like because you obviously have met me and a hundred other people from up there. Yo, Pennsylvania came. was like playing New Jersey when we played CCs or you know. Uh, Allentown, Spankies, you know, anywhere near Stroudsburg. Like, it didn't even have – it could be 50 people and the whole place would go bananas. You know what I mean? Now you can have 200 people that are showing up just look at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like, what? why would you even come to the show, man? You know, you know what this is? You know, I mean, the last show I went to in New Jersey was the Reaching Out record release show. And every band killed it. I I was so into it. And I haven't been moved like that in a long time. You know what I mean? I, I, I was just talking about it last night to the, my Mikey Merch, my dude. And uh, I was like, yo, that show was amazing. You know what I mean? Like, for me to be moshing and, and like, there was a vibe, you know? Yeah. And it was a good vibe, you know? It was a good time. Everybody was into it. Everybody came to see a show. It was about the show. But it's not always like that, you know, like, but now everything is clicked out, too. You have certain, I don't know, man, you know, those kids, this safe space kids over here, you know what I mean? All the kids are waiting for you to say Isn't something. Isn't it weird? Kids. We're in it's something <laughs> titled the hardcore scene and we have safe spaces. Isn't that? <laughs> that but then you got the other kids over there just waiting for you to say something so they can cancel you hardcore kids. And I'm like, wow, why are you even hardcore? You know what I mean? Like you're just waiting for somebody to say something remotely that doesn't agree with your thought process. And you just want to, ah, oh, you know what I mean? Where hardcore is about being true to who you are and being yourself. And, but here you think you're that, and then you're going to condemn somebody else for being that, you know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. Through a know? keyboard is really all they're going to do. Like, cause yeah. they can't, that's as far as it's really, that's all that really is. <laughs> it's as far as I can. Did you see the one video of, of hate breed? Where they were talking about it was a white power dude in the in the in the in the in the show, and they wanted Jamie Hapery to kick him out. Back in the day, we would have beat this dude yeah. senseless. We yeah, would have yeah. kicked him out. They're at begging Jamie Hapery to kick some dude, out. and he's telling them, "Yo, police your own, police your own shit." You know what I mean? Yeah. Like these kids won't even that. If and that was a real, if that was a real threat, what would you do? Yeah, you know what, like, what, I, what I kids don't realize, like, number one, Jamie's got – he's made some money. He's not going to put his hands on anyone. He has security for that. But, two, you you did one wrong thing racially at a show. You died. That's yes. it. We, we, we yes. killed you out the building. Yo, we, we, we played that show with SOD, VOD – was it Earth Crisis in Philly? And uh, there were a bunch of white power there, dudes there. And the one dude was gigantic, had Hitler on his freaking chest, sea hailing or whatever. And uh, they started fighting with these dudes. And they come down the street. We beat them up in the parking lot. Dude pulls a gun, shooting guns. Yo, it was yep. crazy. You know what I mean? But That's we handled that hell. shit. We handled that shit. Yeah. And I, did I try to run around the parking lot like a chicken while this dude was popping shots? Yeah, yep. I was trying to get <laughs> shot. You know what I mean? But like, yo, we we brought it to these dudes. Yeah, we didn't ask the band to beat somebody up. That's crazy, bro. Or throw yeah. somebody out of the show. The, the hardcore scene week. was like a hockey game. We yes. policed ourselves. That was it. No one called the cops or none of that stuff. It was like we were going to dealt with this ourselves. Like I could never do anything remotely close to what I did in the nineties. I no. will definitely be videotaped and yep. arrested. Or cancel. Well, I already, I already consider Fury of Five canceled, but yeah, uh, you know it. You can't do nothing. You know, no. you can't say nothing. Like, so I don't say nothing. I, no. Like, my, even like you know, we got the song "Wake Up America" on that War with the World, and my bass player wanted to play with it. I said, "I ain't touching it. Mm. Not even going there, bro. It's a different time. I'm not singing anything of anything like that. There won't be no politics and anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's my personal." And I have my personal reasons for it. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it might be associated with Trump or, you know what I'm saying? Or you might be looked at like a, some kind of uh, pro-American races or I don't know. I don't know how these fucking people think. You know what I mean? Like they're crazy, you know? 
you know, I'm talking about Bill Clinton on, on uh, you know, it was about Bill Clinton and, and what was going on in America back then. You know what I mean? America was fucked up back then. It hasn't changed. It's just gotten worse. Yeah, yeah. You know, you yeah. Know? but people, like I said, they think the government's a friend, and that's where that's where they get it. That's where they get it fucked up, man. You know, just look at your paycheck, and then that lets you know right there that the government look is at not our people. You know. Really look at our wars the last 50 years. We send soldiers to die for oil, which is basically profit. I just look at my paycheck. When they take money out of my check for I don't know why, you know what I mean, for some made-up reasons, and I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. You you know what I'm saying? Like, it's nuts. I mean, like, Texas don't even have a state tax. Jersey does. I don't I don't understand Texas why why, 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 why one state – does and one doesn't. I don't there's know. A, there's about seven others: Florida, Tennessee, South Dakota, Wyoming. Yeah, there's no federal income tax there I, because I think they make the money up somewhere else. I, I think right. is what it is. But but it, that's a government working kind of for the people in a sense. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know. But when I look at my paycheck right there, lets me know that the government don't like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, you know, and how much do you get really get back with your income tax? Is it really like a I get, I get what, nothing. compared to I get what nothing. they you know, you're like yo, they take they take almost let's say I gross thirty two hundred, they'll take uh, maybe I take home seventeen, you know what I mean? So they're getting over a thousand something, you know. The more I mean? you make, the more they take. So so yeah. you that's once a week. It's just let's uh, you know round it off to a thousand dollars a week. They take in taxes. Know what I know what I got back this year from the federal government? Nineteen hundred. Well, you're living large, friend. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they took a thousand dollars a week. A week. There's fifty two weeks. Uh-huh. I get nineteen hundred back. That don't even make no sense. Yeah. Uh, wow. So. So the, when Fury came back here, how did how did that uh how did that come to life? Uh, well, you know, I tried to do Fury in 2010, and it got very controversial, and then uh, I did it again in 2014, and it was supposed to be with some of the original members, like Mike, and he was going to get Chico, and then that fell that kind of fell apart, and then um, at that point, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going to keep it moving," and I got a whole band together and try to come back as Fury 5. And then that didn't really work out. And then, uh, I don't know. I'm yeah, but it's just working, doing my thing, mountain biking, you know, do, doing that was real heavy. And then, uh, I don't know, I think it was Jave hit me up, said he's he was interested. In it. And then I was like, well, hit up the other guys and see what they think. I hit them up and everybody got on board and, we started uh, looking for a drummer because the drummer didn't want to do it. He was asked and he, he declined a couple of times angrily as well, I heard, but it's what it is. And um, Mikey Mayhem hit us up through Joe Stanley from Departed. And I gave him a couple of songs to learn. Well, I gave him a lot of songs to learn. And we booked a practice uh, t- Last year, was it? Yeah, last year in January was on my birthday. We came to practice. We did one song, and then we did Every Man for Himself, and it just clicked. And we got through a slew of songs, not perfectly, but they were not bad. And we were like, yo. And then, you know, we booked our show in June, June 11th, and uh, and here we are, man. We got four. Five song EP, you know, four new songs, and uh, threw a bonus track in there because the drummer liked Taste of Steel. So we he, we re recorded that, which was our third song we ever wrote, you know, which is great. I think about that. The third song we ever wrote was Taste of Steel, and people still love that song today. Well, it lets me know that, like, we write timeless hardcore because of the way the lyrics and the structures are. Like that song sounds like any band that's playing right now, mm-hmm. Taste of Steel. You know what I mean? They're doing that style that we did in in '94. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like it's crazy. So, in, in addition, uh, the <coughs> band, the band's back. You got the album coming out right soon. It's out. It's out. It's out. It's out. And, you and, get a physical. You get a physical copy with a CD, 
Uh, we just put up a pre-order for vinyl, picture disc, 12 inch, real dope. And, uh, you know, it's on all stream platforms. This came out uh, yesterday. Awesome. Congratulations. Now that now that you have that out and you got the new lineup, I realize you're always all, you know, in the work working force as, as well. Uh, you like are you just going to play where you can? Are you going to try to do a tour? Yeah. Like, Well, we just got we just got uh, a, a booking, a booking uh, type thing, forthright booking. And uh, they're real excited to have us on the roster. They understand the situation. I'm not giving up, uh, you know, over a hundred thousand dollar a year job, right? To go on tour for for chicken nuggets, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so if it makes sense, it makes sense. Like, like I told the man, I, I I personally would rather just concentrate on writing material and and put out a nice full length. We're about to do a compilation song. We have a song called uh, "Cold Day in Hell," and uh, it's super dope. It's kind of thrashy, kind of kind of like. 80s vibe thrash but with fury tinge you know and uh you know listen we're writing machines i got two albums written already lyrically you know i just told you the album title possibly for the next one and i got 13 songs written for that you know so i i i never my mind never shuts off I'm always got lyrics on deck you know what i mean like just ideas and ideas that just never stops and uh but it's cool, man. Like it, it, it feels really good to be back. The real people, which I call the real ones, are loving it. You know, like the the vibe is great, man. You know what I mean? Like people are very excited to to have a hardcore band that 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 puts in uh, puts in the work. You know, and and the creativity and the thought process to make a decent decent song you know like anybody can write chug chug riffs junk 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 you know yeah you, you know what i mean so like we like we're really thought out and we and we really i mean and we write fast so like what the hell is going on here sorry about that okay. um you know so and even my guitar player jay he was like yo you gotta slow down like you can't <laughs> even keep up you know but you know listen i i like i Listen, time is short if you think about it because no nobody knows when their time is up. So I'm always ready to to make moves, you know, and, and just keep it coming. And plus the internet and the way the internet works and the way the mindsets of people work, they got like 15 second spans now. You know what I mean? It's the real shoo, 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 yeah. shoo. So you got to keep on hitting these kids with mad stuff. It's not like how we came up in the 90s. You get an album, you had to wait up excuse me, a whole year or so for next album. So you only got to listen to that. And so now you can just write, 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 write and put it on the internet. That's what a lot of these bands do. And they and then, and then they sound very polished and overproduced and just very lame, man. You know, we keep it very authentic and, and raw. Like, and I wanted to make an example of it. We had practice yesterday and my friend videotaped us doing the song called Souls in the Soil. And people are a lot of people are loving it. It's really, really dark song, and it and it it comes from a real place. The lyric structure came from from a job I was working on. I can get into that in a little bit, but the production on the record is dope. This is probably the best fury, sounding fury we've ever done. And uh I was listening to the video that my man recorded last night, and I was like, wow, we almost sound exactly like the CD. So I posted it just to throw it out there. So people don't think that like, we're just smoking mirrors. Like a lot of bands sound great on an album. And then you see them live and you're like, ah, oh, they suck. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Or they can't match the production. Yes. You know? So, but we added all kinds of like, you know, Jay and Chico and Mike, they all up their game musically. The drummer now we just got him a sampler. So we got like bass drops and, all like things that we could that we put on record in the in the 90s and we couldn't do live but now we can do everything absolutely live you know so we're into the production end of it kind of like got a lot of i went to see uh fit for an autopsy we're friends with pat who's in the band you know and uh i was just blown away by their stage presence and sound and the lighting that's the next thing i want to get into some lighting on the stage and just you know make it dark man you know like in just 
very entertaining because at the end of the day, that's what we are. You know, people are paying to see a show, you know, and that's what we always gave them. But now we can make it even more intense, you know, and make it more dark and fitting and more angry feeling. You know what I mean? So you really get like drawn in, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a it's a great time for a band like this. I think it's needed. You know, like I just think at this particular moment, the way the world's going, I think I think I think, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. You're having a balance that you you don't want to give up your job, but still create music and do it where you can for now. You know, and see and see where the ball you know lands. You know, I think yeah. it's a good idea. Yeah, you you just can't just you know back in in the 90s i was sleeping on floors you know like sleeping here and there i didn't have a car i didn't have a license i didn't have a job all we did was music but now it's different yeah you know i got a home a wife two dogs you know car note mortgage you know like you just can't just run off and jump in a tour bus you know if it don't make sense but yeah we're definitely going to play you know like we got we got a we got something coming up that's really cool hopefully it pans out i mean we got the official offer for it so i'm sure it's going to happen but i can't talk about it right this second but i'm so so excited for it you know and uh you know we're gonna probably do some stuff on the west coast again and the midwest and talking about midwest but we're look actually really looking to 2024 because uh that's when the festivals okay. re up on bands so you know this whole year is already booked you know Listen, we 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 came back from our last show September seventeenth, and it's only March, and we put out two videos and 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 uh, an EP. Most bands can't even do that in a fucking year. Yeah, you, you, you know that's how fast we work. You know, from two thousand seventeen uh, September seventeenth, we dropped our video and first song in uh, the end of uh, December, December thirty first. You know, Sweet. and had and, and almost had the record finished. We just finished it in Jan January and just released it now yesterday. Uh, that's just a, <coughs> a gelling of how how your unit is. I mean, yeah. It, well, it, the chemistry in the band's insane. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like like we know each other in and out. We we know how each other how we're gonna move our thoughts. You know, me and Jay don't even have to speak. We're always on the same thought process. You know, you're a good and, unit. You're a good yeah, unit. Definitely. And 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 Mikey Mayhem, him too. He's he's right in there with us now, man. The kid, he does his homework. He's in the catalog deep. He knows all the songs. But I told him before he came in, I said, listen, you can't come in this band and sit behind that kit and play like a higher drummer. You have to sit back there like you wrote the first song with us. You know what I mean? Or it's not going to work. And I said, you're the most important person in this band. Without you, this band is nothing. And then it goes from you to me to them. You know what I mean? So if me and you are not in sync, it's not going to even get out here. So me and you got to be in uh, aligned. And we are the piston in this fucking thing. And if we're not connected, there's no connection out here. But he, he, he is... He is a amazing drummer. He's a good dude, and he's uh he's about it. And uh, he's been with us now over a year, and, and it's just we're just growing, you know. I'm pumped to see what happens next. And with that, we're gonna go into the ten round segment of the show, which is fun. All right. So these are a list of questions between music, film, and pop culture. It's just a little bit of fun here. So question one: What's your favorite? Favorite venue to see a show at? To see a show? To see a show. Well, I would have to say the Stone Pony, man, because, you know, I'm a Jersey guy, and and that's where it all started for me musically. You know what I mean? It wasn't the first place I played as a band, but I played in the Stone Pony pl plenty of times, and I've seen so many shows there. Or I could say the Fast Lane which is also in Asbury Park, but that place got leveled. And uh, that's the first show I ever seen in there was the Undead, Token Entry, and Chronic Fear. And it was amazing. And, uh, you know, either one, either those two spots, the Fast Lane or the Stone Pony. Sweet. And your favorite venue to play at? 
was the cafe bar. I never played there with Fury of Five, but my my first man locked up in life. It was right in Long Branch on the boardwalk. And uh, you could see the ocean right there. And it was like small. And it was a rafter I used to hang off of when I, when I was singing in the band. And, and, and it was there was no bands back then. It was like a handful of metal bands, a couple of local bands. But people would come out and represent. And it was just an amazing place to play for me. Plus, I grew up in Long Branch. It was like where I lived as a kid. And it was just so meaningful to me to play there, you know what I mean? Right on the boardwalk where I grew up. It was, it was great, man. And it was ran by this guy, Jacko, who, who was, uh, did so much for the, the hardcore and music movement back then, you know, it was cool. Sweet. Favorite country to play in outside the U S favorite country. I would have to say mm, either, uh, Belgium, Belgium was always, always good to, Fury of Five, but also uh, England, London, man. London always went hard, f Fury as well. So, it, you know, it's a toss-up between the two. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your personal favorite hardcore band? My personal favorite hardcore band? Um, Biohazard, man. I, I, You know, I don't know if they – I consider them hardcore because that's how I, I found them, you know, yeah, so know. like – Biohazard to me, their first record to this day is like the Bible to me. Like I hear those songs, and I was even thinking about doing another Biohazard cover off of that record, you know, because you know that's the one hold my own on it. Yeah, hold your own, really good. Yeah, it, 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 we we covered that, and uh, that record to me is super super important on on the foundation of fury five and just me as an artist itself you know what i mean it's like it just molded me in a direction like 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 wow this is real like you know and uh so and then and if i was to cover the a song off of, off of that again it would be justified violence gotcha. off of that record cool and in your eyes in the scene who was the most underrated hardcore band Hmm. Us, <laughs> <laughs> us, man. We, I, I think we get shunned a lot uh, by other bands because of the attitude that we had and and uh, the antics that came with us. And uh, even to this day, when uh, they speak about New Jersey musically, we're never mentioned. You know what I mean? And we've done a lot for bands, you know, influence a lot of bands and, and, and things and, and, uh, no mention. I just read an article not too long ago, like a couple of weeks ago. And they claimed that these, these two bands from New Jersey were the goats. And I'm like, goats, I, I never even heard of these bands. You know what I mean? And listen, I'm not taking away from those bands. If that's how whoever wrote the article feels, I've been doing New Jersey hardcore since 1990. You know what I mean? How 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 was this dude even considered a go? And and listen, I play, locked up in life. I played with Typo Negative. I played with bands sick of it all, Life of Agony. You know, death metal bands. My band Position of Power played with all kinds of bands. Fury of Five played all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we're no mention. And we're not the goats. You know what I mean? E-Town, not the goats. You know what I mean? If if, if anything, you know what I mean? They got a New Jersey name. They th Their band's name is named after Elizabeth, you know, E-Town Concrete, you know? Yep. I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know, like, how, how, how that works, you know what I mean, in my opinion. But I, Fury, I would have to say Fury 5. Next question is, what's your favorite album of all time? Favorite album? Hmm. Oh man, I know so many, so many. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow, favorite album? I, I would have to say the first Biohazard. It, um, that's my that's my go to, and uh, suicidal tendencies, man. Um, that's endless. Yeah, 
you know, how about a laugh tomorrow and, and all that. That's one of my favorite records too. Then, you know, <laughs> deep manufacture from fear factory. Oh, dude, I can go oh, simple tour or rise. Yeah. I can go death metal, uh, malevolent creation, retribution. That, like I, I have a lot of, a lot of favorite records. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's hard, but I, if I had to choose one, I, I definitely would have to go to first biohazard. You know what I mean? I, I lived in that record, you know, like I know that whole, every lyric from beginning to end. Like if I could, I put that on, I could sing every single word from beginning to end, every song, you know? How about outside of like the metal and hardcore? Uh, you have a favorite album of, of a particular artist that's like way over here? Uh, rap, uh, Mob Deep, the okay. Infamous. You know, I, I like that. That that's one of my in in the rap world. That's like my Biohazard record. That's my other go to. You know, because you know Fury Five was definitely hip hop influenced. So that. Mob Deep was always my, well, that's where I got the name Box Cutter for, well, with, Box Cutter was going to be, I wanted to call it Rusty Shankholder, but Rich thought it Rich thought it was too long. So then <laughs> this guy said, what about Box Cutter? And he was like, oh, I like that better. So that's how, that's how we got Box Cutter. But both of those came off of, um, you know, the infamous record Mob Deep. Sweet. Switch over to the film world. Who's your favorite actor? Favorite actor? I don't really watch much movies. I know that's disappointing to you. I don't even watch a lot of TV. Um, you can take a pass, but it's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Uh, favorite actor? Hmm. Uh, I don't really. Favorite movie? I can give you, but I can't. I don't. That's I don't... The next question. <laughs> but if you could skip the actor part. Who's the yeah, favorite? I don't. I don't I, the <laughs> Warriors. The Warriors, my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Warriors, dude. Warrior or like or, movies, or American Me. There, those two movies are like just phenomenal, in my opinion, man. You know, and and and, and so, uh, Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back because it's so Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, you don't get any more Jersey in that. No, that, 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 that. I love that movie, bro. I must have watched that like uh, at least 50 times, bro. Hell yeah, it's hell just yeah. fucking hilarious. And the last one they just put out wasn't Court. terrible, it got a little emotional at the end, which I was kind of caught off guard with, but it, it was cool. I, I didn't I, watch I like the curveball at the end of Clerks 3. I was like, <laughs> oh, he's going there, all right, this is really happening, but yeah, <laughs> well, you know, but. Not to spoil the movie, but how many times could those two have a fight and then this hug at the end? You know, yeah, I, right, right. I think it was just kind of like a cool way. But final question. I always think this is a cool cool one, though, to end it with. It. Favorite person from history, currently living or past, that when you hear about them, like all eyes on them, like you're just drawn to hearing about them? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I, I would have to just say – my best friend who passed away, uh, Bapo, you know what I mean? Like, that's a dude that meant a lot to me. And uh, he was in a band called Social Decay. And, like, you know, I, I was like a fanboy back in the day to the band. And and then we, you know, became great friends. And, and even throughout the years, um, you know, I was, I've always been a, a – a head case and unpredictable. And I would always be on, on the, the bad end of relationships, but he never chose a side. You know what I mean? He always was my friend to the very end. And the last time we had spoke, he was talking about coming to see me play. And then I got the call that he died. And then, you know, because of Facebook and I'm still good friends with his brother, you know, he comes up all the time and he's really, really truly missed as a person, you know what I mean? If he was here, man, everybody loved him. You know, like he was the type of dude, they even, we had a friend, well, she's still my friend, but they were, I don't want to say her name, but she was on the white power side of things. And he was so cool that even the white power dudes wanted to hang out with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they, they just, you know, and uh, it was a great dude, Bapo, man. That's my dude, man. Yeah, when we 
it almost makes me want to cry and talk about him, bro, because he was so so close to my heart. You know what I mean? Like he was like uh, like a brother, like a you like blood re relation. You know? Gotcha. Uh, well, brother, I mean, thank you so much. That was a great list uh, of a great show. Thank you so much for coming by at this time and giving you the floor for any plugs and whatsoever. Uh, you know, thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. You know, we've been friends for a long time, man. And uh, it's just cool that we're still alive and uh, keeping it moving, you know, grinding, you know, Fury 5. We just dropped a new record, uh, Half Past Revenge. It's on all streaming platforms. You want to get it and see, you know, see what it's all about. You know, it's good stuff. But uh, I appreciate you having me on, man, for real. Absolutely, brother. Uh, anytime you got something to throw out there you're always welcome on you're definitely an animated not a boring guest in any way shape or yeah, form I, I know you tried to get me on a couple of times man that's just timing wasn't right you know you hit me up before. oh they get you man don't, don't worry about it at all but with that i thank this audience for taking the time to check out the show please hit that subscribe button on youtube spotify amazon stitcher and iheart radio new shows every monday and with that i say thank you stick man